Um, so last week we would have started with financial projections. Um, we looked at startup costs um, only. So we looked at capital building. Um, we identified the two types of startup costs, which would be fixed assets, which are big costs um, that for things that last more than a year, things that you're going to be using continuously. And we also looked at operating capital, which we're going to delve a little bit more into today. Of course, operating capital being um, things that help the business run on a day-to-day -day basis rather than just the, um, the preparatory costs. We looked at capital building, so getting money. We looked at fixed assets, the different types of fixed assets. I hope you all are taking notes. Um, we looked at all the this, yes, different ways of getting capital. Um, we looked at the legal fees as the start of cost. So we looked at registering the business. Um, copyright protection, marketing, insurance, licenses like cut license and all that jazz. <clears throat> Fantastic. Any final questions on that before we move on to operating costs? Are we good? Um, remember I told you all that I was running out of images and I'm a visual learner. Uh, I was running out of images to make it interesting. So at, after that point, I just started putting pictures in my door. So now if you see strange images um, coming up, it's just, I, I got distracted. So operating costs. Um, let me move this thing from here. So take note, operating capital, which they also call working capital sometimes. Um, these, as I said already, would be the costs that are associated with the day-to-day -day running of the business. So previously, we would have talked about fixed assets, which are things that um, that you're using continuously or things that, um, those are bigger costs. So things like your rent, your equipment, your building. So those are fixed, um, you know, they, not, they don't vary. But operating capital, you all know the drill, meeting ends in 10 minutes, you just come back. So um, operating capital um, would be the money, the capital, remember we said that capital refers specifically to financial assets, meaning cash, things like that. So these would be the assets that are specific to the day-to-day -day running of the business. Um, so some of the examples would be, of course, rent. Um, feel free to write this in your own words um, and write it over in different ways. So don't necessarily just take it down verbatim as I have it here, um, but write it in a way that you know you could understand it. Utilities, so utilities being water rate, electricity, um, air, well, air conditioning would come under electricity, but if you're in a temperate country, it would be heating, um, water, electricity, internet, um, things like that. So all of these things for the day-to-day -day running of your business. Wages, and in a little while, we talk about the difference between wages and salaries, um, and then stock. So these are just some examples of the, the things that you will have to put money behind um, to keep the business open, more or less. Um, and of course, it will differ depending on the type of business, because if you are running an online store, if you're selling, what was our example last week? Um, masks. If you're selling masks on Instagram, you're not going to have to pay rent. You're, more, you're probably not going to have to pay utilities because you're probably running it from in your bedroom, in your house. Um, you might not have to pay wages depending on the size of the business but you'd more than likely have to pay stock unless you're doing an event like Jiron's event, which is a, um online um, event or something like that where you're not actually selling anything. But these are just examples. It will differ depending on the type of business. I hope you all are with me so far. Um, and remember previously, we would have talked about revenue expenditure and um, the next type of expenditure that I can't remember the name of right now. <laughs> So this is um, this comes under revenue expenditure again things that um, are for the day to day running of the business and these are typically smaller 
cost. So if you want, you can take a little pencil and write on this side there, um, smaller cost, as opposed to the next type of, the next one. You all know what I'm talking about. There's a diagram. You all took a diagram. Right. Um, so this, the theory is that in a stable economy, um, these expenses, the operating costs, will usually increase by an average of 3% a year. So this doesn't necessarily say much because it's going to depend on the economy. It's going to depend on whether you, the econ, economy is in a um, period of boom or bust. Um, I don't know if we are considered to be having a stable economy in Trinidad in all fairness. Not to say that our economy is wildly unstable, but I don't know what's their um, criteria for this. But this will have to do with things like inflation, because of course the price of everything more or less goes up every year. So they're saying on average with the increase in prices of things, your operating costs will, will more or less go up every year, as well as the cost of everything goes up every year. That's the thing about love, um, adulthood. Life just gets more and more expensive as we go along. Fun. Um, everybody with me so far? We all have that. Yes, miss. Understood. Good. Where is my diagram? Um, there's another picture of my dog. So again, going on with operating costs. Oh. Can anybody tell me what's the difference between a wage and a salary? Just showing up. Any ideas why how a wage might be different from a salary? And remember, we're talking about the money that we put in into the everyday running of the business. Um, I think a wage will be, um, will it be like a, well, not a fixed amount? Because mm -hmm. don't you know how it has, will it be a fixed amount? You tell me. <laughs> hmm. you're, you're on the right track though. You're on the right track. But um, so a salary. Eh, eh, what going on? Why is my thing not thing? All right. A salary is a fixed amount. Um, and it will be per pay period. So for instance, if I hire somebody to um to sew the elastics onto my masks and they are paid a thousand dollars a week then that is a salary a wage however is paid by the hour so for example it might be paid thirty dollars an hour so that way your amount of pay depends on how long you work um so the main difference is that a salary a salary is paid per pay period so that might be a week it might be a month, it might be a fortnight, but a wage, the cost varies because it um, differs according to how much time you work. So the nice thing sometimes about having a salary is that if you work a little bit, you still get paid, you will almost get overpaid. But if you work too much, you get underpaid, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so you could work 40 hours within that week and you'll still get a thousand dollars or you can work two hours within that week and you'll still get a thousand dollars but if it's a wage <clears throat> if you work 40 hours you'll get 40 by 30. you all know i don't know um, one twelve hundred i think um <laughs> yeah i think um but if you work two hours you'll get sixty dollars $60. Um, so that's the main difference. And these, of course, we were talking about operating costs. So these are the costs that um, 
keep your business open on a day-to-day -day basis because um, you have to pay your staff in order for your business to run. Shauna, you had a question? No, miss. Okay. Um, and then we're looking at the difference between inventory and stock. So inventory are the products that you have that... So that includes all of the products, everything that you need to make, um, whatever it is, the call is going to end in a minute, in less than a minute. So you all know, just come back, right? So that would be if you are um, making masks, your inventory will include the fabric, it will include the elastic, it will include uh, the filters, if you have to put filters in your mask, it will include the bag that you have storing it in plus the mask that you've made already. But stock refers specifically to the products that you already have made and those are what you're going to sell. So the stock, in our case, our online mask business, will just be the mask that we've made. So we will have two pink masks in stock, two blue, one black, 50 red, whatever is the, is the case. But the inventory would be what we have in our back room um, all of the raw materials plus the manufactured um, good, basically. So that's the difference. And of course, we're still talking about operating costs. So you will have, to, if you're selling masks, you will need to spend money to have your inventory or you need to spend money to have your stock in order to keep your business open on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, if your mask business have no masks, then you have no business. Um, then you're basically dormant for whatever the point in time is. Um, I don't want to go on before the call ends, but everybody with me so far, does that all make sense? Y'all could write down the examples, write it down however you want. Um, but that was that, that's it for operating costs. Um, so we just covered startup costs and operating costs. And then we're going into a new interesting topic. Now, I just wait until the call to end. Everybody good with that? Miss, what is the example you have for stock? For stock? Yes, Miss. Um, so the example for stock in this case, if we use in the mask business as um, our big example, um the masks so the actual completed sewn masks that are ready to be sold those would be a stock um so if you have a business that is selling clothes the clothes will be a stock um inventory would refer to even things like um the bags that you would put it in um if you're making things it would refer to the the material that you're using to make it and so on and so forth. Um, make sense? Yes, miss. Right. <clears throat> so we're moving on now to revenue projections. Not as fun as it sounds. Um, remember I tell you I was running out of pictures. So I was like, you know what? Let's put Buddha inside there. Because, you know, Buddha is supposed to attract... Pros, pros, this Buddha, the laughing Buddha, is supposed to attract prosperity. And if you rub his belly or if you put $2 underneath him, it is whatever. Um, so revenue projections, if you break apart the term, a projection, of course, is like um, trying to, almost trying to see into the future, trying to come up with an estimate. Um, and revenue would be the income, um, your total amount of cash inflow or capital inflow. Um, so revenue projections, they put it together, it's trying to come up with um, an estimate, uh, not a guesstimate, but an actual educated estimate um, of how much revenue or how much income your business is going to have. Um, so this is quite necessary because when you, when you have an expectation of how much you're going to bring in, you're going to know how you should manage 
your money, or you should manage your resources, um, or you should manage your cash. Um, so if you anticipate that you're going to make a thousand dollars a week, you're not going to have, you're not going to be paying, have five employees and you're paying each of them fifteen hundred dollars a week, right? You'll scale down, you'll start off small and say, okay, we could only afford to pay this many people this much money because this is what we project um we're going to be making for that particular um time um so as i said revenue would be the total amount of income um and that depends on whether you have a, whether you're a retailer or whether you're a service so um if we are selling stages or if we are repairing stages um same thing i just said revenue inflow right trying to estimate how much money a business will make i just use a lot of words to say that exact same thing um so this type of forecasting that's another word um for trying to see into the future trying to make an estimate forecasting so y'all could write that down as well so that if they drop it in the exam um yeah so if they drop it in the exam you all know you know you won't be like a fish out of water um so it takes to estimate the quantity type and quality of your sales to come so quality of sales would have to do with um whether you have repeat customers um whether all of your sales had to have a discount behind them so you're actually coming up at a loss um whether you so type would have to do with whether it's um bulk you're selling in um whether you're selling mostly to big corporations or individuals um that kind of thing so your revenue projections would incorporate all of these different factors in it quantity type and quality quality is a big thing in sales um as well um which is why customer service is very important because if you have bad customer service then you're going to have you might have a large volume of sales but you're going to have low quality sales you might not have repeat customers or loyal customer loyalty because they'll say this person always have a bad attitude when i go in by her to do my nails so i'll go by somebody else who might not do it as well but at least i won't feel uncomfortable in this space All right okay i just got a, um a message about the the great thing but i'll check it out in a while and i'll respond to you all afterwards <clears throat> so um in terms of revenue projections this kind of goes without saying it's much easier for companies that have been in operation to predict their revenue or to project as to what their income would be because they have the years of existing data to look at so they would say okay in 2016 we made this much in 2017 it increased by about 10 percent in 2018 it increased by about 12 percent 2019 so they could they they have a lot of and they might be able to tell okay we make more money during the july august vacation um and this year they're having carry festa during july august so we make more money because whatever the case might be um however newer companies so startup businesses startup businesses um will have to kind of forecast so y'all as a great example when you do your business um it's a little bit harder to make an estimate um so you might use market research which we'll get into in module two i believe um, or you might look at businesses that are similar to yours um, and use their data to kind of forecast what yours might look like. Um, but it's, it's, it's typically not as straightforward for a new business to try and guess how much money they're going to make as opposed to an established um, business. We have about 10 minutes again. Let me see how we're going to get into sources of financing. Um, are we good with that so far? Any questions, comments, contributions, queries, concerns? 
that was it for revenue projections. It's just learning the terms. A lot of this first module and don't get them. Um, I would recommend doing like a glossary or a table and just writing down the definitions and getting to know all of them and revising them so you know what the terms mean. But more than know, you understand them in working knowledge. You have an example for everything. That's the best way I would say to go about. Um, and so basically, you have your personal encyclopedia? Yeah, I would say so. Your own little dictionary or thesaurus of business details. <laughs> because when, you, when they all pile up, they get very um, confusing. But in this case, like for example, when you t take a party term, you know what revenue means, now you know what projection means. So if they put together the terms coming down, um, you more or less could make sense of it that way right so let's move on to sources of financing <clears throat> as you should be able to guess this is a we spoke about this um briefly but we're going to go more in depth um into the structures or lack of lack thereof that they are in place um to get money to have a business going and remember i said that you gotta have money to make money. That doesn't mean you have to have a lot of money to make a lot of money, but you need some kind of capital in order to start a business, whether it comes from your own pocket or your mother purse or whatever the case might be. You need to have some kind of financial capital in order to make money. If you have a lemonade stand, you need to have a table. You need to have lemons. You need to have cups um, and so on and so forth. So, it just danced. <laughs> so we have two types of financing. I'm just going to give you all two seconds to draw up this little diagram here. You can do it however you want. If you want to put it in a cloud, if you want to do a pie chart, if you want to, whatever you're doing. Um, and don't play smart and feel all your screenshots in my diagram. Eh? Write it down. <laughs> So the two types of financing would be debt and equity, and we have things to go beneath them as well. So just take a minute. To, um... Miss, while we're doing this for the minute, like, I know I don't want to be off topic, but um, do you think that, you know, to one in performing arts is, like, easier than, you know, two? Um, no. No? Um... I would say that, now you see, I had a very interesting experience because we were the first group to do it. So we were the guinea pigs. We had a lot of figuring out to do. We were trying to make sense of, and that was a, a big burden in addition to doing the, um, the subject itself. So um, I would hmm. It, it kind of also depends on who you have on your team because if you have people who are cooperative and, and well connected, then unit one is quite a bit easier. Unit two was, I would say unit two kind of depends a little bit more on like, you're, you're kind of less self dependent in unit two because you have a director for your performances. You have, um, well, at least for your group performance, for your individual performance, you have a lot of feedback with your whatever the case might be. Unit one is a lot of problem solving, a lot of applying um, the business concepts, a lot of brainstorming, and a lot of figuring out. As in, uh, you see things and you realize that's not going to work, so you have to regroup and whatever. But I think it's, it's, it's fun. But I don't know which one I would say was more difficult than the other. I can't even remember which one I did first. Oh, no, I did unit one first. But because all of these things that I'm now teaching you, we had to basically figure them out on our own. Um, that was a lot harder for me. But I don't know if I'd say one is more difficult than the other. And also, I mean, everything is more difficult than COVID, so... 
Okay. Um. Okay, I I just got a message about the results thing, which I will send to you all after the class, just because I want to get into this topic before our time is up. So with debt financing, the money is borrowed, it must be repaid, and it carries interest. So the perfect example is a credit card. Um, if you are or credit, credit in general. Um, so if, and that's how credit card companies or banks make money from interest more than likely. And you all would have done this in primary school maths. I vaguely remember that. So if you use a credit card, it might not seem as though the money is being borrowed, but it more or less is. But the thing about it is when you use this credit card, you have to pay it back at some point in time and you don't just pay. So if I spend a thousand dollars from on my credit card, I'm not paying back a thousand dollars alone. I'm paying back a thousand plus whatever the interest rate is. So whether that's 3%, it will be a thousand dollars plus 3% of a thousand. You all know, I don't know what that, how much that is. A thousand and thirty or something. A thousand and three, I don't know. Um, it can be titty. Anyway, um, so debt financing, for example, if you use credit for something, you have to pay it back. And it also incurs interest as time goes along. And of course, the longer the period is, the more interest um, is involved. Yes? Um, equity financing, on the other hand, is where instead of paying interest, and instead of um, having to repay the money, you're going to give up stakes or shares in your company. So you're going to say, okay, the, we have our mask company and this person is going to give us um, 10,000 TT. Um, and in return for that 10,000 TT, they would like to have 2% ownership in the company meaning that well it would definitely be more than two percent but meaning that they have a bit of say in how the company runs um and they also have some stake in the profits that would come in as well um that's that in a nutshell also the money does not have to be repaid so that person would give us a ten thousand dollars and say you don't have to pay me back all i want back from it is my shares or my stakes um, and whatever percentage of the profit. So I guess their percentage of ownership would also um, equate with the amount of profit that they will be able to get when the business does start to make money. And of course, equity financing does not carry interest. So um, yeah, because you don't have to pay it back People say you don't have to pay back directly they're not gonna say all right well I'm gonna lend you ten thousand dollars and then it's gonna have an interest rate of three percent or whatever the case is because you're not paying it back um, so we could debate which one is better than which um, but they both have their role um, in different ways they both have their pros and cons um, Serena, which one do you think looks better in terms of the type of financing, debt or equity? Which one do you think you would quicker go for? I mean, I feel like it would depend on the business, but I don't know, debt? Because someone having ownership and saying the way the company should go doesn't sound very appealing. I agree. I agree. Um, but of course, yeah, as you were saying, it does depend on the business and the, they both do have their um, pros and cons. The nice thing about um, equity, I suppose, is if you're not, if you don't mind giving up ownership, well, not full ownership, obviously. Um, and the nice thing is that most times it's, it's a small-ish percentage of ownership but you'd be surprised how much um, 
a much say people would have with um, 5% ownership of a company. But yeah, that's a very valid point. Oh, and it's half past. I don't want to go into depth into sources of financing just yet because I'd want to do that altogether. So I'm going to stop there for today. Um, was everything clear with all of that? I'll leave this here just in case y'all are still doing up your fancy diagrams. Anybody have any questions about it? Stop 